Finally, dumating na ang OnePlus Nord 3. It's been a while na inaantay natin itong phone na ito. At alam natin na this is the OnePlus is to be na global variant. So, ang dami sa inyo nagtatanong kung kailan magkakaroon ng global variant ng OnePlus Ace 2B. Ito na, si OnePlus Nord 3. So, in this video, papakita ko sa inyo everything na kailangan malaman dito sa OnePlus Nord 3 bago na flex ang you want it to buy this smartphone. Let's start. So, hi guys! Ako si Rich World and Gadget Psychic and welcome back to my channel. So, mago natin pag-usapan itong phone na ito. How about a quick unboxing? The OnePlus Nord 3. And yan ang nakasulad dito sa gilid, OnePlus Nord 3 5G. And ang hawak natin right now is this 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gig of storage. And ang corner na meron natin dito is my favorite Simisty Green. So, tara, buksan natin. So, buksan na natin ang box. Hmm, OnePlus logo. Where is your little box dito? Inside, we have your SIM injector tool. We have your Nord, the welcoming note. Safety guide and quick start guide. Ito na yung phone itself. Hmm. Ganda ng green, no? Other things inside the box. Your 80 watts na super book charger. And of course, nandito ako kanyang red USB Type-C cable. And probably one thing that's missing dito is definitely ang kanyang gel case. So guys, kita na natin ito OnePlus Nord 3. I would say na ang kanyang design is exactly the same sa OnePlus Ace 2B. Except dito sa ilalim, nandiyan lahat ang print na ito. No? Yung mga uh, CE and whatever certification, lahat nakaprint dito sa ilalim. Which for me, uh, takes away the beauty na itong phone na ito. I would prefer na andito lang OnePlus logo and natin nakaprint dito sa ilalim. It would look a lot, lot better for me personally. I think, para sa inyo rin, mas maganda wala ito, di ba? Now, what's nice dito sa phone na ito is ang ganda ng kanyang design. Mano one plus sa mga flagship level ng kanyang design, ang kanyang color green is the same doon sa green na gusto gusto ko, no? So, one plus 11. So, itong phone na ito comes together with a MediaTek Dimensity 9000. So, alam naman natin, it's more of a performer na chip ni MediaTek. So, gusto natin ma-check no, kind of, uh, points dito sa Android. Benchmark was able to gather a 800 68,000 points. For me, it's quite high na rin for isang chip ni Dimensity na nandiyan ni 9,000. So, if you break it down, ito ang mga scores naman na makikita mo. So, kung chinek mo naman ang ganda score dito sa so wildlife, quite impressive ang mga score na nakuha ko dito. Now, nilangin naman natin itong phone na ito sa thermal throttling test and I would say na quite impressive din ang ganda ng score dito. It was able to give you almost all green dito sa test na ito. No? So, I did run this for roughly mga 5 times pa ulit, ulit para makita natin kung tama naman itong score na nakuha natin. It almost ito average na nakikita ko. So, this one was able to throttle to 90% ng kanyang performance. So, I would say na okay ang kanyang processor dito sa phone na ito. Malalaman natin a little bit later pagdating sa gaming. Now, one of the things na gusto ko dito sa phone na ito is maganda ka display. 6.74 inch na 1.5K ang kanyang resolution to get over 120Hz of screen refresh rate plus AMOLED ang display nito po nito. Now, if you look closely dito sa phone nito, I would say na almost symmetrical ang kanyang bezel. So, making it looks very nice and very thin on the side. So, this is probably one of the winning factors. The best viewing experience and experience ko for a mid-range smartphone. Now, if you're trying din dito sa TikTok, I would say swiping is definitely fast. And dahil sa kanya high refresh rate, as long as maganda yung internet connection, be it globe smart or dito, kaya-kaya naman niya, no problem browsing on TikTok or even Facebook. Now, itong phone nito has a decent battery size, 5,000 mAh sa kanya battery. And I would say that this one can support up to 18 watts na super charge which can let you charge the phone from 10 to 100 in just around 45 minutes tapos na mag-charge the phone na ito. So after 2 weeks kung ginamit to as my daily driver, I would say na makunat ang kanyang battery. Itong phone na ito would let me last the whole day. As long as you're using it uh, for normal activities, I would say na no heavy gamings, kaya-kaya na mag-last sa one whole day. Siguro, Pag nag-start ka ng day mo at 8 and you end it at around mga 6, maybe may mga 35% na pang matitira dito sa phone na ito based on my average usage. Now, sabi ni OnePlus ito, phone na ito has a new cooling technology and it has a graphite technology dito sa loob giving you better heat dissipation dito sa phone na ito. So, while we're playing the games like Call of Duty Mobile, we're playing uh, Gadget Impact and Tower of Fantasy, I would say na well, hindi naman siya sobrang kumiinit. Probably the 
hottest na na-achieve ko sa mga 42 to 43 degrees Celsius. Well, for me, ah, it's not really that bad na rin siya. But if you want to play longer hours ito sa phone nito and gusto mo malamig yung phone, I would suggest that you can try this one. Itong bagong kulang ni FlyDG will probably give you one of the best cooling experience sa inyong smartphone without really hurting your wallet. So gagamitin natin later to during gaming and of course the link on the description box below. So like I said, naglaro tayo ng games ito sa phone na ito. I did play Call of Duty Mobile, then naglaro din natin Genshin Impact and Tower of Fantasy. Now playing two of the more graphical intense game dito, Tower of Fantasy, sinet natin sa all high settings. I would say na okay naman siya for the first 15 minutes. And as you play along itong game na ito, I would say na okay naman siya uh, as you hit the 30th minute mark. Smooth naman siya. I've almost, wala naman masyado na feel na frame drops dito sa kanya. Ever sobrang minimal lang. So, the gameplay was nice and touch response okay. And pretty much enjoyable itong Tower of Fantasy dito sa OnePlus Nord 3. Now, pwede din mas again, sin impact ng gameplay na ito, sinet natin sa all high settings. Sa 60 frames per second din at the same time. I would say in the first 15 minutes, okay naman ang kanyang gameplay. Now, when you hit mga 30 minutes mark, I would say na okay naman siya, but there are sometimes may nafe-feel akong konting frame drops. Pag sabay-sabay na naman labas mga boss, sabay-sabay sila ang pinapattle. May nafe-feel kang konting skip and konting frame drop, but that's as far as I can say. So, after playing for one full hour dito sa game na ito, wala mo masyado na feel na frame drops. Kain-kain naman na yung handle. But yun nga, there are times talaga may mafeel ka minor na frame drops dito sa game na ito. And the gameplay dito is definitely fun and the experience is really nice. And what I like in kanya dito is maganda ang kanyang sounds dito sa Genshin Impact mo. So, I would say na this one dahil calibrated siya together with Dolby Atmos, the sound is definitely good. I would say na hindi yung sobrang lakas na like other flagship ni OnePlus but definitely sounds nice dahil sa kanilang good calibration together with Dolby Atmos. So guys, ginamit natin itong cooler ni FlyDG. I would say na it was really efficient in cooling. So I would say ito ng design. Medyo pinalit yan ng konti ang ganang design. So I would say na itong uh, version 5 niya, ang B5 guys, a little bit bigger but this time around dito sa uh, B6, it's a little bit smaller but ang ganang Heat dissipation is also the same. Uh, I think mabilis naman ka rin, I don't know, heat dissipation dito. I'm really happy dito sa kanya. What's nice dito sa kanya pag naglalaro ako, hindi siya sagapal sa aking mga daliri. No? So just saktong-sakto. Kasi kung medyo malaki, medyo magaharang siya. So giving me less space to get a good grip while gaming. But itong si B6 is definitely good with the 5DG. Now it's time na pag-usapan natin ang Canon camera. Ito phone na ito is a little bit different from the OnePlus H2P. This one has the Sony IMX 890 which is not the same configuration as the OnePlus H2P which has the Omnivision sensor. So ang Canon main camera sensor is a 50MP na aperture 1.8 na sensor together with OIS. Then meron sa 8MP na ultra wide lens together with EIS and a 2MP na macro lens. Now, what's nice dito sa kanilang camera, it can let you shoot up to 4K and 60fps. Now, kanilang front-facing camera dito is a 16MP which can shoot up to 1080p and 30 So, nilabas ko tong phone nito to outdoors condition. I would say na marami ako na kuang shots dito na magaganda on outdoor condition. But some of them are sharp and really nice. But, well, some of them are sometimes soft. No? So, siguro it depends on yung AI nitong camera dyan no? to calibrate it. But there are times na medyo na feel ko may pagkakunting softness ang kanyang uh, mga shots. But overall, it was able to give me some really nice experience ito sa camera na ito. Some of the shots are really, really great. And I would say yeah, na ang camera na ito probably could be optimized a little bit more kung i-eyes ni OnePlus kundi ang kanyang firmware dito. No? But the camera na is definitely good. I would say na I'm really happy with the results sa mga nakakuha ko dito ng shots. And further taking indoor, I would say okay ni mga shots dito. No? Taking some shots on low night condition, I would say na okay na okay tong camera na ito. I was able to perform under low nights, kayang-kaya na mag-perform without a problem. Now, tinagar mo siya gamitin during night time. And I would say na kanya night mode is a little bit off no? And it's also the same result na nakukuha ko using yung kanya night mode. Which for me, as medyo na pagtaka bakit hindi na inaay sa kanyang night mode dito. Sana ayusin niya dito sa kanyang firmware update. Now, one of the bright spots dito sa phone na ito, ang kanyang selfie camera is definitely nice. So, using it sa outdoor and indoor condition, kaya medyo low light, kaya, kaya naman niya kumuha ng some really great shots dito sa phone na ito. 
Now, tingnan mo na natin some shots using the front-facing camera and the rear camera dito sa phone na ito. So guys, ito ang OnePlus Nord 3 and right now shooting at 1080p itong using the front-facing camera. I can say indoors, ang ganda na kanyang quality and well, quite stable din ang camera. And well, Now, after checking your video using the front facing camera, I would say okay, siya, no? So, this one you can use it uh, to shoot some TikTok videos or if you want to do some vlogging, kaya ng kaya yung handle nito phone na ito. Now, if you're checking naman ang kanyang rear camera on taking 4K and 60, I would say na, wait, maganda ang kanyang resolution. Very stable siya. Diver siya OIS. Now, I would say a kind of color of production when you're taking videos to the phone dito is definitely nice. And I would really highly recommend yung to phone na ito, no, if you're somebody who likes using it for photography. And if you're somebody na mahilig sa photography, I would say na man is worth naman to phone na ito. So OnePlus Nord 3. Now, I hope guys na natulungan ka kayo mag-decide dito sa OnePlus Nord 3. So everything that you need to know, I think na ibahado to naman sa inyo. And if you want to know kung saan na pwede ma-purchase to phone na ito, I'll be linking it on the description box below and if you like this video don't forget to like subscribe and of course hit the bell icon para di mong miss mga future uploads dito from my channel and so ako para sa Richmond and you're watching Gadget Sidekick what's up like and subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit that notification bell for one of my latest uploads click the dito and for one of my popular uploads click here